Hello everybody, welcome back to the JRB Apiary. We have a lovely upstate New York fall day right now. The temperature has started to change around here, although we're back up to 80 degrees today. We had a few days where it went down in the 30s, actually 30 degrees even at night, which has made these trees look lovely. The plan for today is we're gonna do a hive inspection on both hives. This could be the last one of the year. I'm gonna see if hive one needs some extra resources. See if there's a little bit extra honey, or maybe even I can pull some, I doubt it, but let's take a look. Once again, starting things off just by opening up the hive, you can see the amount of propolis that was there just kind of gluing everything together as I tried to remove the follower board in the back and to get to the first frame in the far back of the hive. That frame uh, was still getting some comb established. There was a little bit of nectar stores there. The bees were interestingly clustered. Uh, I don't think they were in winter clustering and the second frame looked very similar. Third frame had about half honey stores as did the fourth frame. So starting to make some progress there as far as getting things ready for the winter. Fifth frame, even more full, I would say it was uh, maybe three quarters full of honey. Sixth frame, a little bit strange. It had a bunch of divots taken out of it and there were a little bit of uh, hive beetles on there, which aren't really dangerous unless they take over your hive. I decided to set it aside for now so I can investigate it further. Yeah, I was a little bit impressed by the amount of honey on this one. This was pretty much a full frame of honey. And in my greed thought, maybe I would try to harvest a little bit off of this one later on and just risk that they would have enough stores for the winter. But I wanted to get some harvesting and I'll show you that later. That little stand, by the way, is made for lanes and it's really good. The sugar water feeder, which I had not been using for a while now, had a lot of comb on the bottom. I decided to take this out of the hive for the winter and I will freeze the entire structure with comb on it for using later on if I need to give them some stores with some comb in the future. Of course, the bees did not like being brushed off of there, but that's the way it goes. There are other ways to herd them off of there using wood or something like that, but the brush is quick and effective. And I put that frame back. This frame here was a little bit of brood on it, actually. About half honey, maybe a third honey, and had some brood there, and the rest was open. And it looks like they were converting it, along with some of those other frames, from brood to pure honey frames. More brood on this one. And again, honey on the top. Didn't see any wax beetles or anything like that, or wax worms. There was even more brood on this frame as the bees attack the camera a little bit by bonking into it and headbutting it. They were a little aggressive overall, but for the amount of stuff I was doing to them, probably not too bad. Now this it's one. Definitely brood chamber. Very much so a brood frame. Big, thick, dense brood, nice pattern, very nice frame. Still making some bee stores as they prepare for the winter. Although that should be dropping off exponentially now. Pollen stores here. Yeah, this is mostly honey and pollen being stored towards the very front of the mm -hmm. hive entrances now. Although I do have two entrances open on this. <clears throat> and that theme continued for the rest of the frames mm -hmm. onto the end. Kind of storing right. mode. A lot of pollen storage there, a lot of pretty colors, and honey on top. I tend to be a little grunty as I pick up these frames. They're not that heavy, but they're a little awkward, I guess, when you're picking them up. Maybe maximum of 10 to 13 pounds per frame. Final frame. I didn't overexert myself trying to find the queen because obviously there's a lot of brood, there's a lot of activity, there's a queen in there. 
And that's a good thing. That is the recovered hive after the bear attack, and I think they may be good for the winter. So it's just a matter of closing up the hive and finishing uh, things off. I will be putting some winter storage straw on the top to help with moisture control, and I'll probably make a video on later. I did get to try out my new stand for holding these frames and the sugar water feeder that I had in there forever that they built comb on, I took out and put in the freezer so I have it for another time for reestablishing colonies or if they need something else. I decided this frame I was going to cut a section out of in order to harvest just a little bit of honey. Maybe I should have cut it from the bottom instead of doing vertical, but hey, I'm figuring this out as I go. It did put a tremendous amount of honey on the ground, however. And if there's one thing that bees like, it's honey. And it attracted them from all over the place, even at the bottom by the house. Luckily, they were here to clean off my gloves and all the stickiness that was going on there. It might be better to try to do some of the honey-related things closer to the hive instead of it invading your house and garage. Well, that was a successful adventure. Hive one's doing well enough that I was able to take just a little bit of honey. I probably could have taken more, but I worry about them not having enough then for the winter. So I'm just gonna leave them where they're at. Hive two inspection will come on another day. This really took up a lot of time as I was trying to decide what I want to do and figure things out as I went. Uh, again, beautiful upstate uh, fall coming up here and I uh, can't wait to try to get a little bit more honey from the other hive and try to keep these bees alive for the winter at the same time. So still learning as I go, still a lot more to learn. Well, there it is, the first of any kind of harvest, just a little bit. So for this harvest, I took some brew in a bag, uh, just muslin type cloth, although I think this is a synthetic, and I put the comb inside of there after crushing it. And even just sitting in the strainer before I crushed it, there was a little bit of honey that was draining down into the bottom. But I placed it inside of that bag after I mashed it up and just let it drain uh, through that sieve and into a container. And then I squeezed the bag itself in order to really get the honey out. Now I should have just let it drip on its own because I did get a little bit of comb through that into the honey, which made it a little bit cloudy, although it did settle to the top and I was able to skim it off later. But we did get a final finished product and it is a very dark and very tasty honey. You can see some of those bits of comb in there, which aren't bad for you. If anything, they're probably good for you. But a lot of it did float to the surface and I skimmed it off just to make for a smoother product overall. The end amount of comb that was left over, I then soaked in water, cool water, so that the honey would separate out from the rest of the comb. And then I can have the leftover beeswax that I could use then to rent her to make candles or what have you. And I drained that uh, through a sieve and through a mesh also. I'll make a separate video of me extracting the honey from Hive 2 to show the process a little bit further and where I cleaned it up a bit. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.